coming back to school with me We could have done it all so easily Hi, my name is Craig Thompson Wood. I'm your host on Teaching with Board Games. Here today to take a look at Bananagrams Duel by Bananagrams Incorporated. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to go straight to the Take It to the Table and in the course of that also talk about things in the report card. So just want to try and change things up, try things, do things a little bit differently. So let me know what you think in the comment section below. So this is the box, or I guess box is a loose term here, the container that you'll get with Bananagrams Duel. So it's a plastic container, lid opens like that, and you keep the dice inside. You're gonna get 24 of these dice, they're, or letter cubes, I guess as they're called in the game. They have different letters on them, and when you're playing, you're not going to sort of look at them and say, well, make sure that, oh, I've got an X, make sure you have an X, and all that. Just, you're just going to take, everybody takes 12. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. So, each player is having 12 dice and that's what they're working with in the game. You're, you're going to roll your own dice, you're going to use your own to make your own um, words, your own crossword puzzle in the same style as you would with the regular Bananagrams. As it is Bananagrams Duel, obviously for two players, but we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, so each player is going to roll their dice like so. I'm just going to put those to one side and I'm going to roll the other dice here. Okay. And then from those, you're going to create your own crosswords. Remember, there's no names, proper nouns, uh, slang, anything like that allowed. So you're just going to take these words and... Yeah, see, I can spell like... Oh, I wouldn't be able to spell Dakota. I almost spelled Dakota. But that's not allowed because that is a proper noun. Bad. Okay. Oh, that was a D. There you go. So if this was the way it was being done, then this you know, I was this player, then I would at that point say done. I would show that I've used all twelve of my letters and they're all acceptable words. I've done everything acceptably, so therefore I would then win the round and this would indicate I've won the round. I get one of these little bananas. The first person to get 10 bananas wins. Now let's just say I was um, stuck on something there. Say I hadn't, I hadn't thought of the tent and um, you know I was, uh, I was looking to do something like that. Now that is not allowed because you have to make sure that you know ET, no abbreviations, no uh, slang, no proper nouns. So ET like extraterrestrial doesn't count. Uh, and you can't, there's no word, like this is in French, so we don't have uh, E-T-A uh, for uh, an answer. So dot obviously is okay, but the E-T would not be allowed. So you have to make sure it reads properly, both horizontally and vertically when it's, when it's going, making uh, words in both directions like that. But the first way I'd shown you was acceptable, so that would have earned me my first point. So the first, you play with that and you go until, so you have a bunch of these things and the first person to 10 points is declared the winner. Now you can also do a variation on this in that you're playing the same way. So you get your 12 dice each and you are um, rolling them, making your words and so on. But for each one, you're going to have a, a theme to the puzzle. So nighttime. So as you're rolling these things, you know, you have to make sure that at least one of the words matches the theme. So again, I see the word tent, and I could say tent because I sleep in a tent at nighttime when I'm camping, right? And that's, that's fine. As long as you can explain it in a way that makes sense, then you're good to go. If at some point you're looking and say, I, I can't do, you know, you make some of the, you know, your letters and you, you're just stuck with a few, you can always re-roll again to get the ones that you need, right? And uh, that's going to, you just keep re-rolling, trying to find what you have, and the other person can do the same as well. So it's just a race between two people to get the things, and this would be the one for the theme. Um, so that's the first one was what's called the classic duel. The other one is a, um, a themed game. There's other ways to play, like you, you get what you get. So you can only, you, know, you can't re-roll any of the dice that you have. And if neither completes, then whoever has the most cubes in their, in their grid will win that round. 
you can do it so that it, there's um, you have to have rhyming words in your in your grid. And the rules also suggest that you could make your own ways to uh, have rules that would incorporate more players. So, I mean, if you have more players, I mean, who's to say if you, if you have two sets of this, that four players can't play at the same time, each person having their own 12, right? The original Brennanagram's Duel comes with 24 dice, which means 12 dice for two players each. 12 dice for each of the two players, but who's to say that if you don't get m multiple sets that multiple people can't play in the same round. And you know, the nice thing about this too, when you're considering time and stuff, like you're I guess the game says you're playing till 10, but if you're playing in a classroom and somebody doesn't get to 10 by the end of the period, then whoever has the most wins. If both have the same, they tie, no big deal, right? You're playing for fun, you're not playing for, you know, prizes and things like that. Or if you just get tired of it, right? If you're playing at home and you just don't feel like playing anymore, then just stop whenever you feel like stopping. Nothing saying you have to go to the complete 10. It's not like 10 is going to allow the game to develop to a point where it um, makes more sense or, or things. You know, some games, they need to be played out. This one is one of those that doesn't. It doesn't have any sort of definitive time. You just kind of play until as much as you want. If you want to play to the full 10, what the game recommends, go for it. Otherwise, stop whenever you feel like it. And that is how you play Bananagram's Duel. So in looking then at the number of players, I would give it the C plus because it's the duel. So it's really a two player game, but they do have ways. And like, I think it's reasonable ways to incorporate more players. Sometimes they say they have ways to incorporate more players, which really doesn't make sense. This one does. So incorporating more players makes sense. So I will take up to the C plus. For learning, I'm going to give it a B uh, because the game is, um, it's fluid in the way that you're, you're trying to look at the letters that you have, you're thinking of the words that you know, you how to spell them and things. It's not going to really help you to learning the spelling, the new words and things like that. Um, but re reinforcing the ones that you do know, and just, you know, this that good mental fluidity, like kind of like you have in city of zombies, but this one's more for the words. So I like that about the game. So it's a nice little uh, touch on that. For fun, I give it a B. I think it's a fun game and certainly something that would beat uh, waiting endlessly in the airports and things. Like I say, this one is it's the one thing they advertise on this is that it's a small space word race. So you don't need a lot of table space in order to play this. So this could be even probably done on the, the tray table on the airplane once you're in flight. So it, it's nice that it has that uh, ability to play in a smaller area and not require much to it for the um, space requirement. So for time, I'm going to give the game an A. Uh, the game says it takes 10 minutes for the 10 rounds. Now that's one minute per round, which is possible, but I don't think it's necessarily going to happen. I mean, if someone be quicker, someone be longer, but I would say 10 to 15. I mean, yeah, that's, that's not that much longer, right? Just five more minutes. Besides which you'd have the opportunity to just say, I don't want to play anymore, or I have run out of time and therefore we need to stop now. So let's just stop where we are and count up who, see who's the winner. So there's just, there's that always that flexibility of, of stopping um, earlier than you want to. And the setup is nothing, you know, just, you know, dividing up the dice, making sure each person has 12 dice. I, I haven't counted out here, but you know, just make sure each person has 12 dice and then you're good to go. And then clean up is just simply putting it back into the container again. So easy. So for the time, definitely give it the A. And for cost, I'm going to give it uh, an A. This game costs like $11 at uh, levelupgames.ca. So, and they're, you know, so it's a really cheap for a game uh, to begin with. Besides which, like I say, you know, because it's so easy, so quick and just so versatile, something like this, you could just slip into a purse or something like that to, uh, or, or, or carry on bag or whatever to have with you when you're, when you're traveling or wherever you're going. It's great to just have around and then the they're made out. This isn't the Bakelite tiles like the original game had, but they're like a, it feels like a firm plastic. I tried even scratching off the, the letters here to see if there's like a sticker there, but they're not. So really well etched in the letters. So they're not going to um, suffer from, from damage easily. So nice sturdy things, nice sturdy components. It's an A for me. Let me take you to my final thoughts. So Bananagram's Duel is a game which is going to be very easy to incorporate into a classroom setting due to the fact that it's very inexpensive and due to its limited size and footprint being the space that it requires to play on a table, setup time, etc. I mean, overall, this is the, you know, Bananagram's has always been a game which is 
been very popular with classroom teachers, but Enneagram's dual is going to be much the same thing with just a little bit of a difference, focusing more on the two player aspect and rolling of the dice and things. This is the kind of thing you can do with small groups by having a couple sets for that group or two or three sets, depending on the size of the group, or if maybe a couple of people are done an activity early, that is an acceptable thing that they could be doing while they wait for the rest of the class to finish up. So, um, or indoor recesses, there's all kinds of applications this could be having in the classroom. Um, if you're playing at home, I mean, it's obvious. And as I say, for parents who, are, who do travel, I think this is a great game to be having. Take it to the beach because it's not going to get destroyed by water or sand or anything like that. Take it uh, to the airport, uh, trains, wherever you're traveling. This is an easy game that's going to make itself easy to play in whatever setting that you're at. So overall, the game does get a recommendation from me. Thank you for listening to this video. If you like what you heard, then please do remember to hit like and subscribe down below, even the little bell icon to let you know where the new content is coming out. And I'm putting out content on a regular basis around topics of gamification, game-based learning. But that is gonna wrap it up for this episode. Until next time, thanks for coming to the classroom. Are you coming back to school?